Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers classes in illustration, graphic design, photography, creative writing, financing, marketing, web development, and much, much more. For me personally, I'm interested in upping my graphic design game and learning from experts like Temi Coker here, I can go ahead and gain the skills necessary to help up my game here on YouTube. One of the best parts about Skillshare is it's incredibly affordable, coming in at less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. This is much cheaper than going off to your local college to learn basically the same skills. And right now as a special promotion for the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below, Skillshare will give you a free premium trial to check out their service. With the world the way it is today and nobody knowing how 2021 is going to shake up, there's never been a better time to hunker down, gain new skills, build your resume, all from the comfort of your own home at a very affordable price. So go ahead, take advantage of that link. It is in the description down below. Start your free trial and get learning and having fun. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Good Old Gamer, the channel where we cut through the marketing BS, take a look at new and old gaming technologies to figure out what makes the most sense for you. And old technologies are back on the table as NVIDIA basically admits that there's no possible way that they're going to be able to keep up with GPU demand. So instead, we're bringing back, not Turing, but we're going all the way back to Pascal. The GeForce 10 series is back in force here in 2021. So the ghost of 2016 continues to move forward. And that's what we're gonna be talking about here today in this video. Before we get into it, if you like videos like this, please smash that like button. By liking the videos, commenting in the comment section, and sharing the videos, this lets YouTube know that you guys enjoy this type of content and that they should actively promote it. Without your support, YouTube is actively trying to suppress smaller creators like me. If you look at my past few videos, I'm getting about 1 16th the views that I normally do. So that is a huge hit on the channel. And it's only because of you guys that I'm able to continue moving forward. So I wanna thank you all for your support. All right, so this news comes courtesy of Brian from Tech Yes City. He got an interview with an AIB or a system integrator, and he flat out says to Brian that they're now receiving GTX 1050 Ti's for the first time in about two years. And this is simply because Nvidia cannot meet the demands of the world right now. All RTX 30 series cards, they're all being scooped up for mining. If you're lucky enough to get one for gaming, you're in a very, very small minority as hundreds if not thousands of units of RTX cards are now going straight to miners. We're even at the point now where RTX 30 series laptops are now being used for GPU mining. That's how ridiculous things are getting where a thousand or $1,500 laptop for just like an RTX 3060 is now profitable. That's the crazy world that we live in. So, so it's pretty obvious that Nvidia is just not gonna be able to get them out there to us normal people anytime soon. And system integrators, they need GPUs to put into their systems. So it kind of makes sense for them to go back in time and use older nodes and older technologies to at least put something on the market for the average person to buy. And looks like Pascal seems to be the winner here. So there's a few reasons why Nvidia would specifically want to go with something like the 1050 Ti. Number one, it's an entry level card at this point. It's basically just slightly better than integrated graphics. Two, it uses GDDR5 instead of GDDR6, which is more sought after for the new cards. So they won't be salvaging any parts there. Three, for Ethereum mining, four gigabytes is kind of like right on the cusp of not being useful anymore. So miners are looking for more than four gigabytes on their GPUs to get longer term returns out of them. So that's a good thing. Also with four gigabytes on a 128 bit bus, that means they only need four chips of GDDR5 because it's 32 bits per module. So you only need four chips there. So lower cost for Nvidia. The GP107 die was always very, very small. And it's also very efficient. So it could be put in low profile systems and just basically anything. They could put these in just about anywhere and could work even in things like laptops, thin and light laptops. 
So there's a lot of reasons why this chip makes a lot of sense for NVIDIA to make versus, let's say, like a GTX uh, 1060. We talked about on the podcast that GTX 1060s, even in laptops, are now profitable for mining. That's how ridiculous this is getting. So something as weak as the 1050 Ti and how low budget it is. NVIDIA can produce a lot of these in small volume, sell them at their original MSRP, which is like 160 bucks, which in today's market actually isn't that bad. So they can sell 2016 cards in 2021 at full MSRP with even lower production costs and just make huge money and satisfy basically an entire entry level market that has no other options at this point in time. So talking about this, it sounds like I'm coming off like it's a good thing because it kind of is, but it's also really, really sad and indicative of how bad things really are out there. It's good that there will be entry level graphics cards for people that can't afford $500, you know, RTX 3060s, and they might even be much higher than $500. They might be six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Who knows how much they're going to be? Um, but even the RTX 2060s are about five or six hundred dollars now. So a lot of people aren't going to spend that much on graphics cards. So if Nvidia can bring out a card that miners just aren't going to be interested in. I think that that's okay. And system integrators, they're going to be happy because they have something to sell. Like I said, it's still better than, you know, the integrated graphics on the AMD APUs and even the new Rocket Lake CPUs. Looks like Tiger Lake might be somewhat competitive, but Tiger Lake CPUs cost a fortune. So they're not going to be in mainstream desktops anyway. The bottom line is this is NVIDIA basically admitting they can't meet demand. They're not even going to bother making a 3050. There's just no reason to waste eight nanometer supply and wafers on that because they can sell all their high end stuff at this point in time. They're going to just sell older technologies because they can still get wafers. They already have the masks done. And as long as the memory doesn't suck up from other GPUs, more expensive GPUs being made, they might as well go ahead and produce that. And that's that's just where we're at, guys. NVIDIA's demand might be 10 or 100 times what they normally do. So if they normally sell, let's say, a million of a unit, they might be selling 10 or 100 million of that same unit at that this point in time. That might be how ridiculous the demand is. You and I don't know. We don't have the numbers of potential customers out there, but I'm sure NVIDIA has some sort of semblance of what the demand graph looks like. Hopefully they bring out something like uh, GP106s. I would like to see GTX 1060s coming back. Like I said, RX 570s and 580s. That's kind of the baseline I would recommend. Uh, RX 580 is still about on the level of the Xbox Series S in terms of GPU performance. So those GPUs will still be good moving into the future as long as AMD and NVIDIA continue to support them with drivers. And... The really crazy part is we're talking about basically 2016 technology here in 2021. So five years ago, technology, and we need it back here today because it's really the only move that we have for anybody out there that's looking to get into PC gaming and for anybody who's, let's say, GPU died on them and they don't want to spend crazy prices, they have no other options right now. So... This is a solution. This is, I would not say this is a good solution. This is definitely not an ideal solution. I believe that this is the only solution for people to have any sort of new technology or available to them other than scalped used GPU prices, which are already at or above the MSRPs of these old graphics cards. So yeah, this is just the world we live in, guys. And I don't think this is going to end in 2021, maybe 2022, maybe not. This might just be the new normal if crypto continues to go. It will eventually dip down, but unless it completely falls apart, this may continue to go into the future over and over again. And this might just be a sign for AMD and NVIDIA. Whatever supply you normally sell, well, up it by 10 times or 100 times or maybe even 1,000 times. You normally sell a million units. Well, get ready. You're going to sell a billion units this time around. And to scale up to that level may technically not even be possible um, as fabs and stuff have limited capacities. And moving forward into the future, GPUs, they might have to have the older generations on an older node and continue to sell those through after the new ones come out. 
And that might just be the best way to go, but it really depends on how the market's going. If there's no mining going on, this really isn't a problem. When Turing came out, there were plenty of them. They were everywhere. They were overpriced and awful, but you could buy them. But there was no mining going on of any sort of relevance at that point in time. Fast forward a few years, here we are. So I don't know, guys. I don't know of any other solutions. I think that this makes sense in this market, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Um, did you ever think that 1050 TIs would be back in 2021, considering they really weren't that good in 2016? But I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Do you happen to have any other solutions? If you have a decent GPU, which in my eyes is basically GTX uh, 970 or RX 470 or better, just stick with what you have. Just wait it out. Like I said, Xbox Series S is still kind of on that level. You'll just have to lower down textures because you don't have as much VRAM, but that's okay. You can still play your games. But if you have lower than that or your GPU happens to die, this might be your best option to just gimp you through until the end. But alrighty, guys, that's enough rambling for me here today. This is just a really strange twist in the market. Uh, like I said, Paul and I kind of said that this needed to happen just a couple of days ago, and it looks like it's happening. So it looks like these guys can see the, the same wins that we do. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. If you like videos like this, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. That's really all I have for you guys here today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.